Ragnarok. The second mod map to grace Ark Survival Evolved, and what a map! Releasing way back in 2017, where it was quite unique in that only half of the map was released and playable on official servers upon its release. And it's one of the biggest maps, with 144 kilometers surface space, around 2.5 times the size of the island. Being a very attractive map to new players, because of the ease of resource gathering, and the many great flat base locations it offers, and actual buildings to create your base around, like the lighthouse and the castle for instance, an active volcano with molten lava and flaming erupting rocks, violent windstorms that will slow your player down and limit your vision. It's one of the best for dino levels, with a lot of spawns being close to that max level. It was the first mod map to bring over the wyverns from scorched earth, and to introduce new creatures, such as the Ice Wyvern variant, and one of the best flyers out there, the Griffin. And it's also the only one to offer unique custom mini buses. You're right, kids, it's Ras Clark, and welcome to episode 4 of my Map Survivor Guides. Today, we are, of course, looking at Ragnarok, one of the most favoured maps out there. Before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, share around, and let's get into it. So Ragnarok offers an enormous amount of biomes, and as per the other maps boasts the three obelisks, the blue being seen as the easiest spawn area, overlooking the jungle biome and Viking Bay. The red obelisk, although normally the harder area on other maps, isn't so much here, giving you access to the redwoods and overlooking the highlands area. And green up facing the Hidana Plains, one of the most largest flat areas you can build in. Unique at the time of Ragnarok releasing was that not only did it bring the Wyverns from Scorched Earth, but everything, all of the new wilds that was introduced with that map, its own desert area, and all of the engrams and structures that you could learn on that map. It boasts a pretty dense redwood area, offering all of the things that you've come to learn to tame in that biome. The active volcano, as I mentioned, home to a lot of hostile creatures, and being a new spawn location for rock columns. Which leads us to the Scar, a new variant of the Scar that you know on Scorched Earth, with the same expectations of wyverns and their nests, but usually at higher levels, making this a much better place to farm wyvern eggs. On top of that, there's a cove of wyverns that you can go in and explore, but tread carefully, as it can be a bit dicey to escape from. Dividing the map is the Murder Snow, which is true to its name, without some insane fortitude, you will start freezing to death in that snow. And the scenic canyons area, full of vertical pillars and great spots to build and farm. There's a swamp out on the edge, boasting all of those swamp spawns that you know, and even has its own little Shrek hut. And the ocean, it's a vast space surrounding the land, with so many cool spots to hide away in. And that barely scratches the surface. Ragnarok is an immense map with so many places to build. As I said, the dino spawns are normally quite high level on this map, being the go-to between this and center as perhaps the best to find the high levels of those dinos that you want to tame. It switches up some of the spawns, so Megalania for instance, that are normally in caves on other maps, are out in the open and ready to tame quite easily. Ovis being your source for mutton, a nice easy way to tame, are in abundance in the Highlands area. And the Ice Wyvern is quite unique in that it doesn't have its own designated scar area. It will instead spawn in five different locations at which one of them could be that ice egg that you want. But I would probably suggest going to Val if you really want an Ice Wyvern and we'll touch on that when we get to that map. Resource gathering, as I said, it's great for resource gathering. Offering dead basilos along the beach of the highlands, which you can farm for an insane amount of spoiled meat, hide, keratin, and a little bit of oil. Loot crates are quite easy to farm on this map, being in the passages of the Ice Queen, and if your map allows flyers, it's even easier. And it's got its own desert crates, like Scorched Earth, crates that are out there in the vast desert awaiting you to claim some great loot. Spawning on the map whilst 
Jungle 2 is right on Blue Up, and I mean literally right on Blue Up, and the area surrounding it being seen as the easiest area, avoid it for that reason. Avoid that, avoid all jungle and viking base spawns, as you are likely going to encounter some PvP troll. The highland spawns are pretty good, as they're of course your initial access to those dead basilos and sheep, but on busy PvP maps, I would strongly recommend going for South 2 or South 3, being the less popular spawns and not too far from Green Up. Base locations, there are many, many base locations to build in. And whilst the instinct is to race to some of those waterfall caves near the spawn areas, don't go to those, don't venture to the waterfall caves. Because of that reason, because they are close to spawn locations, you are very likely to get raided early on. It offers some great open alpha spots, with Alpha Pillar being one of my favourites, overlooking the canyons, Southwest Tropics Plateau, overlooking its own desert biome, the Alpha Plateau, the big dug of Alpha bases that overlooks the entire desert area, and if built correctly, can be a monster build. However, if you're looking for a cave location, there are quite a few out there. Triple Waterfall being one of the favourites out there and being one of the best to defend due to its elevated and difficult access. The Lava Cave being a good one due to its narrow corridor and winding path along a lake of lava. The Desert Crack is always contested for being somewhat of a rat hole and can be well defended. The South Snow Cave is quite a popular spot too being somewhat elevated and overlooking the desert. The caves opposite Alpha Pillar and Alpha Plateau are also one of the favourites, being semi-hidden and can be defended quite well if you're online. And as I said, the ocean is filled with so many hidden spots to sneak away into the dark cracks of the world and hide away in, with some surprising locations that can go very deep and keep you away from prying eyes. But of course, the Alpha location in the sea is Mushroom Cave, a giant open cavern with some great flat building spots, but of course a big entrance that will need to be defended well. But if you're starting out and looking to quickly build up something to work to one of those base locations, I would recommend going to the Carnivorous Caverns. With many ways to enter, it has the bonus of being a very, very dark cave so you can hide away in one of the many bends and corners in that cave to help you get on your feet as quick as you can. And it also boasts an expansive underwater area. Out farming your resources and you're going for that metal, you'll find loads all around the map, but Canyons is certainly one of the more popular locations, boasting a wealth of metal from pillar to pillar to pillar, all hidden within the rocks and another dense area of metal is just south of Alpha Plateau, with perhaps more metal there than there is anywhere else. Obsidian, luckily for you, there is a cave dedicated to obsidian. Along the black sands near the volcano is a hidden windy path offering all of those mats that you need to make poly. Crystal, one of the more favorite areas to go and farm that are the passages of the Ice Queen, where you can find plenty of oil too and are quite small for choice as there are also veins lurking around the area that you can build oil rigs on. And Ragnarok is certainly one of the best for paste because on this map are large beaver dams that boast more paste with you coming away with a lot of paste and some pearls to boot. But it's also worth looking at the lake below Green Up. If you catch it right, you'll come out with some serious paste. And yes, like all the other maps, silica pearls are farmed all throughout the sea. But starting out, you can find a nice wedge along the river that runs through the canyons. Ragnarok is one of the easiest maps to farm black pearls on very early in game. Because near the southwest spawns, just in the sea, they're right there, spawning like silica pearls, ready to be grabbed and get you some early black pearls. But of course, if you want to mass farm them without going to other maps, there's an alley dedicated to squids that you can continuously farm and rack up all those black pearls in no time at all. Poly is in abundance due to the manti spawns that you can find at the Black Sands area and at the desert. And at Ragnarok again is an easy map because it gives you rocker carrots and sav roots 
that you can farm by hand in the veggie patch at Highlands. The bus consists of the dragon and the manticore, being the easiest variations of these buses, and certainly the one to go for if you just need to unlock those tech engrams that you can get from the dragon. But like Santa, because you're facing two buses, you've got a lot of apex items to farm. And sadly, the manticore can be a bit buggy and not land, but there are ways around it if you stay at the spawn area that manticore will definitely land eventually and you can start farming some serious elements. Ragnarok is great for some of the artifacts, with the brute artifact being easily accessed in the Redwoods cave, the cunning and the immune artifact being easily accessed once you learn to the root of the carnivorous caverns. The strong artifact, considering how hard it is to get on the island, is so easy. Situated at the monkey's puzzle, which is barely a puzzle, it's more a pick. And that's it. And if you're quick on your feet in the water, the Deverera can be easily farmed in Squid Alley. As I said at the start, this map boasts its own unique custom mini buses, with the first and easiest one being the Ice Queen where you'll have to work through the frozen dungeon, finding many red loot crates along the way, and being a great spawn for death worms where you can farm horns for taming and recipes. And once encountered, the Ice Queen scales with how many players are facing it, with it of course being a lot easier against solo players. And once killed, offering you more red loot crates and the artifact pack, where you can also introduce yourself to a dying Giga. Situated in the jungle is the jungle dungeon that leads to the lava golem, boasting more of those red loot crates, but can be a very difficult path to lead on through, with the odd trap, hidden hole, parkour jumping to get you to the arena where you face one of the tougher bosses as being a golem, you're limited to either rockets or a tech rifle, or maybe even a cryoed velo and then you'll have to go all the way back out of there. But it can be worth it as it rewards some of the best BPs in the game. And of course the Hunter Artifact. But the biggest secret of all that gets overlooked and it surprises me on how many people aren't aware of this is Life's Labyrinth. The gauntlet of challenges where you'll face against many, many traps within a room full of buttons that you need to push in the right order to spell out a word, a fire statue room that will burn you alive if you're not careful, a sacrifice required to be made, and a series of mazes and puzzles and death traps. And once you've got to the end to claim two of the four artifacts that you can get in the labyrinth, the clever, the devious, the massive, and the sky lord, only three of which you can get in any one run, you'll then have to face against the Spirit Dire Bear and the Spirit Dire Wolf, which can be quite surprising and difficult encounters if you're not prepared. But I encourage you all to at least try this out once. It's a really fun, laborious quest that will probably take you a day to work through until you eventually exit into the sunshine and realize how long you've actually spent in that dark, deep dungeon. And that wraps up the guide for Ragnarok. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, let me know, and definitely hit that like button as it helps to get these videos out there recommended. I'll be straight into episode five now, working on the next story DLC, Aberration, coming soon, episode five. But until then, my name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, peace out. Thank you.